Hey guys, it's Jannie. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing a book review. Also, Margaret's watching Arrested Development in the background, so if you hear that, that's what's going on. I will try to edit this audio, but if anything, if that's what you hear, whatever. So today, I'm going to be doing a book review, um, and it's of Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. And so the reason that I picked this up was because Cat Paperback Dreams is one of my favorite people on booktube, and like, she and Hannah were like the first two people that I had like ever watched on booktube and so for months I've been hearing her talk about this and like how it's her favorite book and how it's amazing and so I was like okay I'm gonna pick it up and we'll get to that later but um so I finished it in one sitting and I also filmed a review like on Saturday night or Sunday night one of those nights and it was a mess like it was 50 minutes of me just rambling on and half of it was me just like going like this against my book I bookcase because like I was like I don't know what I'm saying so I decided to outline my thoughts and we're gonna have an actual structured review that's hopefully easier for me to edit and easier for you to understand so a quick synopsis so Radio Silence is basically this book set in the UK which is probably why I was confused for a lot of it because I don't know how the school system in the UK works so the main character it's told from her point of view is Francis I say Jean Vier because I take French, um, so say her last name as you will, but we'll just call her Frances anyway, so like whatever. It starts off at the end of Frances's, I guess, second to last year of the UK equivalent of high school, um, and she's the head girl, whatever that means. Um, I'm thinking Harry Potter. So she's the head girl, and she's supposed to be like this overachiever super smart like supposed to go to Cambridge that's like the one thing I know she's supposed to go to Cambridge and she's really like that's her role in the school and in her place and in life and all that but she has this whole secret side to her um when she's home and not at school and so she listens to this podcast called Universe City like it's gonna be so hard to say throughout this whole thing Universe Space City and I didn't really get what this podcast was about because I didn't think it was really interesting. Um, it's, I guess, like a fictional podcast set in, like, the future um, that follows, like, the main character named, oh, guess what, Radio Silence. And so she's, like, a huge fan of this podcast and she, like, really, really follows it. And so she makes fan art on Tumblr about this podcast. And so then the creator of the podcast... Um, DMs her on Twitter and is like, hey, I'd love to like work with you. I love your art and stuff like that. So she gets like really excited. And then there's another character named Alad Last in this book. And he's a year older than Frances. And so at the end of her like second to last year of high school is his last year of high school. Yes. Yes. And so he goes to a different school um, than Frances. And they kind of only know each other through... Um, Francis's, I guess, rival, who's head boy, and his name is Daniel, and Daniel and Alad have been, like, best friends since childhood, and that's kind of how they know each other. And Alad is very similar to both Daniel and Francis and how he's the overachiever, expected to go to a really good school, like, super smart, like, blah, 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 you get the drift, like, every single teen in this book is like that. And so, it turns out, wow, spoiler, um, no, not spoiler, it says it here. So Alad is the creator of Universe City, and they go out to party one night, I actually think this is hilarious. So they go out to party one night, and then Alad gets, like, super drunk, and then Francis has to take care of him, and then Alad accidentally tells Francis that he created Universe City, when it's supposed to be, like, a secret. Like, that's supposed to be the kind of the appeal to his podcast, like, no one really knows who created it. So then they become, like, closer, because they collaborate over the summer, and they get to, like, know each other, and then, like chaos breaks loose when school starts and this fandom gets super kind of FBI investigative like and just don't really um, respect their privacy and so that's what happens and that's what you missed on Glee. I'm going to start off with what I didn't like about the book because I want to end it on kind of a positive note and so I just want to like in case like Kat is watching this or anyone who loves this book like even it personally just like wasn't my vibe but I mean if it means a lot to you like it's still like your favorite book or like it's still a book that means a lot to you and that doesn't in my opinion of that doesn't matter um but these were personally my things that I really 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 did not like about it. okay so spoilers start now okay so I have things that I didn't like the first thing that I didn't like was the writing style and maybe that's just because I love third person and I was kind of like put off by it because it was just it was just so different from what I'm used to reading, which is really funny because I used to read so much YA. 
Oh, I read like all three to all the boys I've loved before oh books um, two months ago, so maybe my opinion is like invalid, but whatever. It's very classic, like first person YA, like the way that it's written, like the complexity of the sentences um, isn't really there. Um, and it's also, this book doesn't really know what subtleties are. And maybe it's just because like I'm in the middle of like my college process. And so I'm writing all these essays that are like shall not tell, like narrative. And so when a book is tell not show, I'm just very, very put off by it and I don't like it. So an example, like the worst example in the book, um, page 100. Um, so Frances's mom is asking her if she like likes Alan and she's like, no, I don't. And so it starts on page 99 and she goes, um, I haven't thought about it. And then that was like what she told her mom. And then she goes, and then I did think about it and realized that I didn't like him in that way at all. And it didn't matter. No, I don't think so. I said, that's a bit irrelevant, isn't it? And so that's, oh, maybe it was just to be like dramatic. Like I thought about it and then like, I realized I didn't like it, but the way that it's written makes me just feel so dumb. Like, can the reader not figure that out for itself? Like, could she have not just said, I haven't thought about it. And then I did think about it. No, I don't think so, I said. That's a bit irrelevant, isn't it? Like, did we really need to say and realize that I didn't like him in that way at all and it didn't matter? No, like, it just, we get it. Like, we get it. And then the next page is like one chapter of a little disclaimer. You probably think that we're gonna fall in love since he's a boy and I'm a girl. I just wanted to say we don't, that's all. Like, okay, thanks. Like, you're trying to normalize a platonic relationship between a boy and a girl in a book. And I guess like that's something you have to address because you don't want people to ship them. But I think that other things in the book, later on especially, really establish that like Alid and Frances like cannot be shipped. Um, namingly like, Alad's relationship with Daniel and so like I think just that just didn't need to be told like the reader could figure that out and it's very like that throughout the book and I just really didn't like it because it seemed like she was just telling me everything because it's written in YA and I guess like I'm pretty sure it was written by an adult like it's just some of it were very forced like relatable teen things and as a teen I didn't enjoy reading it because it's not actually relatable because you realize it's a forced relatable teen thing I guess clothes are important to distinguish like school Francis versus real Francis, which I'm gonna go into soon, but uh, it's just, it was so And so on page 94, hi, he said almost in a whisper and then cleared his throat. He was wearing a Ravenclaw hoodie with gray pajama shorts, bed socks, and his lime green vans. And he was holding a purple ring binder, er, sorry, I'm wearing pajamas. I gestured to myself because I was wearing a dressing gown, a stripy t-shirt, and Avengers le leggings. No judgment here, I actually live in pajamas! Like, I guess, like, the clothes are like, wow, like, I'm quirky, I'm relatable, I don't dress like this at school. But, it's just, did we need to know that? One, tell not show. Two, it's just, like, so relatable, like, I live in my pajamas, and it's like, okay, go off. So on page 72, it, this is just a little thing. It, it might not bother you, but like, just, just a little thing that like I took note of, I was like, uh. And so they're talking and then Francis goes, you props could have set up a water slide. I would have joined it more if there was a water slide, not gonna lie. I made a weird water slide gesture with my hands. Like the thing that I took note of was probs. I make jokes where maybe it's personally just me, like maybe people like actually speak like this and I just haven't encountered them. But I make jokes and I'm like, oh yeah, like totes my guts. Or I'm like, yeah, like probs. Like I will type like that, but I won't actually speak like that. And the fact that Francis does like just annoyed me <laughs> because teens don't speak like that. Like maybe that's how teens spoke in like 2017 when this was written, but she's a whole like 17, 18 year old girl or 16, 17, 18 year old girl in 2017, like, you don't speak like that. Like, maybe if she was, like, a musically teen that was, like, 13, but no, no. I was like, that's not, no, it's not relatable. I don't get it. And on page 167, um, she says, the whole evening was silly. I didn't really understand why we were hanging out. Alad wasn't even in my year group. He didn't go to my school. Daniel didn't even like me. What sort of a friendship group is between, what sort of a friendship group is two boys and one girl? Ugh. Like, as I said before, you want to normalize platonic relationships between boys and girls, but alas, you are perpetuating this issue by, like, commenting on the fact that is a, it is a platonic friendship. Like, just let it casually happen, you know? You don't have to explain that. Oh, 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 also, the internet is a very important part of this book, and I understand the importance of including some of the internet points, but sometimes I think it was just lazy writing. Um, 
I liked the tweets that they included, especially towards the end, like, of the, like, the radio silence tweets. Like, I really liked those, and I thought those were interesting. I thought the texts were, like, a little excessive, but sometimes it, like, showed off how, like, it, sometimes it showed off Francis and Alex's, like, friendship, and so that's important. But this one specific instant is so lazy. And so they're talking about, like, all this February Friday things. This is when February Friday is, like, first mentioned in the book. Instead of explaining this, like, Francis, who is, like, an avid fan of the show, like, loves the show, can't explain this to us, no. Even though she explains literally everything else to us. She had to say, the fandom wiki explained it quite well. And I was, I was reading this, I was like, no, no, no. The next page is not going to be the fandom wiki. I was like, we are not going to get a whole web page to explain what this is, instead of the author just telling me what it is. And I turned it and I'm like, alas, no, it's a fandom wiki page. Okay, second thing I didn't like um, had to do with characters. And so I can go on and on about Francis. But I wrote down all my main points because I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. I went into this book and the way that Kat explained it, I was like, wow, like I can relate to Francis. Like um, me being overachiever, like maybe I'll relate to Francis. I really went into this expecting to like identify with Frances and like understand her struggle and get it. I think that made it worse and I think I'm harsher on her because I get it. Like I understand how it feels and so that's why I think some of the things that she says and the way that she acts is very irrational and it's like sis you kind of just need to sit down and think for a bit and there you go. One of the main things that bothered me was the Francis's need to separate real Francis and school Francis and refer to real Francis and school Francis like that. And so I understand that like a lot of people on the internet have different personas on the internet because they can't, because they're very different in real life and they can't really express who they are in real life, which I guess is Francis's case, but there's nothing preventing Francis from being who she really is. It was very forced in and very within Francis's mind, which I guess is the point and kind of like her character development towards the end. So on page 36, she's about to hang out with her friends or like, this kind of confused me because I'm like, I don't really get how clubbing works. I was trying to stay calm and trying not to Facebook message my mom and tell my mom, mom, and tell her to come pick me up because that would be lame. I knew I was lame, but no one else was supposed to know that. And so she's really out here being a hypocrite <laughs> because she's saying, I know I'm lame, but I don't want anyone else to know that. But then she proceeds to act boring and to act academic around her friends because she thinks that her friends only know her as the boring academic one, which I get it if that's who you portray yourself to be at school. Obviously your friends are only gonna know that, but it was just very like contradictory things like that, that things that she could very easily solve herself, which are probably the reason for her character development and it's probably there for a reason, but I just, because this was such a prominent thing for so long in the book, I just got so annoyed at it. I think with the help of Alad and Daniel and like kind of having these like friends that she can act herself around throughout the book, like she gets better at that and I think she notices that issue and I think she realizes that. But also it's just bothered me throughout. In terms of her actual personality, both real Francis and school Francis, like Maybe School Francis is better than Real Francis in this because School Francis like doesn't really talk and she's very like quiet and like submissive. If her friends were in her head, they would hate her. Like, okay, wait, I have 14 seconds left and then we're gonna restart this because I can only take 20 minutes of footage at a time. Francis is so condescending and pretentious. And maybe that's just me being like an American and reading things in a British accent and getting like the pretension, but I was thinking about that, I was like, maybe I need to be self-aware, unlike Frances, and like understand whether I'm thinking that because of that or if like she's actually pretentious. But then I was like going through the book and then I found some like actual examples of her being condescending and pretentious to towards her school friends. Like these are her friends whom she thinks don't like her because she's like studious and like work obsessed. But no, like she doesn't, I think she doesn't like them and she's just using the fact that they might not like her as an excuse to be like mean about them. Every time she talks about her friends, I'm just like, okay, you're smart and you're smarter than like everyone around you, but that doesn't give you justification to look down on them. So on page 28, so Rain, oh, I love Rain. I will talk about her later, but I will like just briefly like brush over her, but I love Rain. Um, so maybe I'm just like, okay, so don't talk about Rain like that. Um, so they're talking about just like, they're talking about just like boys and stuff. And so then, Francis goes, 
Rain literally said the letters TBH. She didn't seem to do it ironically, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. Okay, one, um, even if Rain doesn't, even if Rain says TBH unironically, um, Francis says probs unironically, so she's also like in that same boat. I wasn't sure how I felt about it. It's just the tone of it is very superior. And even though it's not so explicitly said that she's like, I am better than Rain, she's degrading Rain like on a lower level than her because she says acronyms in, because she says acronyms like as acronyms, like the letters, which is associated with kind of like the dumber younger generations. As someone who is in the dumber younger generation, I understand being seen as like Gen Z and being like, oh, so Gen Z only talks in like acronyms, like TTYLBRB. So like, I understand I'm in Rain's boat and so is it Francis. So that she's one to talk. The next sentence goes, this conversation was so irrelevant to my life that I had been pretending to text for the past 10 minutes. This conversation is so irrelevant to my life. Okay, we get it. You care more about than like boys and partying and all that stuff. Um, and you're not like a normal teenage girl. Like you focus on school and like podcasts and you're so cool. But at one point in my life, I was Francis. I was like, wow, like I'm so smart. And sometimes people like talk about things that are so dumb and I can't relate. And like, wow, I'm so smart. And so at one point in my life, I was Francis until I realized like, you're not being a good person. And Francis is literally gaining nothing. My next point, my last point about Francis, because I need to stop talking about her. Um, she really only cares about herself. And this gets better throughout the book. And before you're like, no, she's a good friend to Allied. It's like later on, yes, but there are little points throughout the book, especially when she's talking to Allied, where you realize she only cares about herself on page 139. And so Francis is like, let's talk. And Alad's like, no, I don't want to. And then Francis goes, Alad. And not even just like Alad, it's like italicized Alad. So there's like an emphasis on that. I stopped walking after a few more steps. He did too and turned around. Turned around? Turned around. Maybe it's the UK people. <laughs> Brian was off somewhere ahead of us snuffling in the corn. If you're feeling crap, I said, quoting exactly what he'd said to me the night he taught me an entire math topic in two hours. It's always better to talk about it. And then Alad says, I don't even know. I'm sorry. And so... It's obvious that Alad doesn't want to talk about it. So maybe it's just like Francis not really having, not really ever being in that position to like have a friend to talk, have a friend to listen to. Um, so I'm giving her like a little bit of leeway and like the benefit of the doubt because this is early on in the book. But then on page 357, after the whole development of Alad and Francis's friendship, I had little speculations that Francis only cared about herself, but this really solidified it for me. And so Francis and Alad like got into the fight over the whole like when um, Alad found out, when people found out that like Alad was the creator, like when they got into that whole fight and she calls him after finding out that like Carol painted over Alad's ceiling. And so it starts on page 356. Francis is like, you can stay at my house instead. And Alad's like, okay, that's good. And then Francis says, that's okay. And then she goes, he'd forgiven me. He didn't hate me. He didn't hate me. And I think that really solidified why I thought she only cared about herself because especially how the rest of this conversation goes, she she only cares that he didn't hate her. And so then Alad is trying to write an essay. And so she's asking him, like, why are you awake at this time? And Alad's, like, with a lot of dot, dot, dots. And he says, like, I'm trying to write an essay. I had to get my deadline ex extended. Like, it's really hard. And then he's crying. Like, the last sentence of 356 is when he spoke. <coughs> I'm getting fired up. When he next spoke, his voice was wobbling, and that's when I realized he was crying. Like, Alad is obviously not in a good spot right now. Like, he is crying trying to write an essay. Like, I've been there. I understand it. And I've had people say what Francis has told me, and I think that's why I personally got, like, really upset. I know it doesn't help, and I know it didn't help Alad, and Francis was just, like, not a good friend. And so then Alad goes, he just really doesn't want to write it. I've been staring at the screen, like, all day. I don't want to do it anymore. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm like... He's, he's like freaking out. Like he's in the middle of something going on right now. He's in the middle of like, whether it's a breakdown, we don't know, but he's crying, trying to write an essay that he can't write. And then Francis goes, this is why you don't save essays for the night before. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Really all she cared about was getting that forgiveness. And after that, she didn't care that what Alad was going through and she was being a bad friend. I think she got a little better towards the end because like character development, like that's how that works. Um, but for the most part, for the majority of the book, um, she was pretentious, condescending, and only cared about herself.
So that's my thing with Francis. That's how I'm gonna end it. Okay. And so another thing that I didn't like with the adult characters was how they weren't really present. Like Francis's mom is obviously like a big part of Francis's life. Like their relationship and their dynamic shows, and especially the fact that she's a single mom and Francis is an only daughter, like that their relationship's gonna be closer. But Francis's mom was only in the book when it was convenient for her to be there. Um, and also the way that they dealt with Carol, I'm just gonna brush off upon, I'm just gonna brush upon this because I could go on and on about it. But it's obvious that Carol's like not doing fine. It's obvious that Carol definitely has something going on. Like her mental health is not, it's not here, but it's never really addressed. And the way that she's portrayed, portrays people, especially adults who do have mental illness, like in not, it's like a really, really poor light because she's kind of like demonized in this book because she's kind of seen as the antagonist and like villain, um, especially like against Alad and his wishes. She's kind of made fun of and painted it in a really negative light because of it and so that's what I'm gonna say about Carol because that annoyed me okay the last thing that I didn't like about this book was the plot um personally it didn't really intrigue me um so that's maybe just me I think it was kind of slow up until it was revealed that Alad was the creator like I, I feel like I was just trying to like get to the climax of the book like I was kind of just reading it and I was like getting really bored I get you have to establish the relationships and the friendships but i don't know i just it wasn't my thing but when it was revealed that alad was the creator i was like oh yeah conflict 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 let's go and so now we're gonna flip over to the things that i did like because i want to end this on a positive note i'm gonna start with the plot and so because i ended with the plot and we're just gonna continue so the plot when it picks up i think it was a very unique plot but i think it's predictable like at some point it got really predictable like for example the fact that karis was um february friday like on page 382 when it's revealed i write 382 predictable um, so for the most part, it was enjoyable, even if, even though it was predictable, you know? And then two topic, it deals with like important topics, especially relevant in like teens lives right now, which are like conversations that are coming up recently. So I think it's very timely. Um, for example, with the whole, like whether college is the track for people and like this, there's this focus on like, it should be high school, college, career, done or high school, college, like whatever school, career, and like that's your life. And um, I think recently, I don't know how it works in the UK, like maybe it's different, like the whole stigma around this thing in the UK is different than the US obviously, but um, I think that's being challenged a lot recently now, especially with people like dropping, not dropping, especially with like the rise of YouTube and the rise of um, internet personalities and like how you can literally have a career without having a degree. And, the realm of the internet is a conversation that people are having now and I think the topic of the book is very timely. Also, because I'm in the midst of college everything, what sometimes Daniel would say something about like not being special outside of his grades, I'm like felt that um, and stuff like that. So that like hit a little close to home right now. So I think it's good that I read it right now. And the last thing, um, you're probably like, wow, sis really went on for like half an hour about how much she hated this book. And now she has like two seconds worth of content that she actually did like. I think the representation in this book is there. It's really like prominent, not prominent, prominent, but it's, it's there compared to like every other book in the world. Um, so the racial diversity, um, Francis is half white and half Ethiopian and Daniel is, I'm going to say Korean. Um, oh, I really wish I knew how to like give my thoughts. But I think Daniel's Korean and one part that like really stood out to me specifically was on page 173 when they're talking about like race and Daniel like is talking about how he would make get made fun of when he was younger for having his name being Daesung and so his mom was like we live in England now like why don't we just change it to Daniel and so then he talks about how even though like people call him Daniel like it doesn't feel real to him and how I think that topic is really interesting and also how Frances talks about how she doesn't really have any like personal ties to her like African side which she wants and it's like hard for her and I liked that like the little topics of race and so the racial representation is there and it's also like I like it because it's very casual like they're people of color and it's important to them and but it's not like their only traits because you know when you have like the token characters um like their only trait is like and their only issues that they ever deal with are because they're people of color and that's not the only issues that happen here and i like that and also there's a lot of like lgbtq rep in this book like francis is bi daniel is gay 
Alid is ace. Um, so you have that. And that's also very similar to with the whole racial diversity thing. It's casually there where it's like, it's not their only trait. Like they have personal, they have personality traits outside of that. Whereas like their only personality trait is like being gay, which is not fun to read because that's like all they have to them. And so that these, the characters have substance and I like it. And I also like the character development of some of the characters. I also love Daniel and Rain. I think they were such good friends and Daniel just please protect him. I love him so much. And I realized Going into this book, I was like, oh, I'm going to relate to Francis, and yeah. But then as the book went on, I was like, nope, I relate to Daniel much more than I do to Francis. And I think also the fact that Daniel was Asian, like, made me relate to him a little more and made me want to relate to him more and like him. But yes, protect Daniel. I love him. Okay, so that those were my thoughts. And so if I continue to do book reviews on this channel, because, um, am I, am I, we'll see. Um, so I want to call my book reviews, like, three Bs, where, um, at the end, instead of doing like stars, it's like a suggestion of whether you should beat it, borrow it, or buy it. And so beat it means like, when you tell someone to beat it, you tell them to go away. So I don't mean like physically beat your book, um, but beat it as in like, just like, eh, like you don't really need to read it, like just pass on it. Borrow it as in like, it's good, but I wouldn't like buy it for my bookshelf and read it like 15 times. And then buy it as like, buy it like right now, read it like a billion times. And so those are my three classifications. For Radio Silence, I'd say borrow it. It's not necessarily like super bad and it's not amazing and it didn't change my life, but it included a few topics that are like really interesting and really timely. And so if it seems interesting to you, like I'd borrow it from the library and read it. It's like quick, quick read. So yes, borrow it. That's my thing. So that was Radio Silence. That those were my opinions and yeah.